Hey guys, this is Mike, and today's video is going to be a little bit more on the basic side, but I keep seeing questions about this particular thing within Logos forums and other places all the time, so I just wanted to take a quick moment to make a video about it, and that's the resource panel toolbar. So let's go ahead and dive right in. So the first question you might be asking is, what is the resource panel toolbar? One of the best resources to display all of the resource panel toolbar options that are available is a Bible, an English Bible in particular. So I'm gonna go ahead and open the ESV because it's right there on my shortcuts bar. And then I'm gonna go ahead and make the ESV take up the full extent of my layout so that way everybody can see it really clearly. And so the resource panel toolbar are these icons right up here at the top of the panel within this resource. So every resource, when you open it, has this toolbar available. Now, different resources will have different buttons available. The English Bibles that have reverse interlinears attached to them are going to have the most buttons available. So this is how you can quickly tell what types of functionality are available within a given resource. So the first button that you're going to find here is on the far left hand side. This is what's called the Parallel Resource Sets button. So if we go ahead and click this, it's going to open up a menu where you can see all of the different resources that are considered to be a parallel resource to this particular one. So in this instance, we have a Bible open. So here are all of the different Bibles from within our library. And these are gonna be available in the order that you've prioritized them in your library. And if you want a quick tutorial on how to prioritize resources in your library, you can find a link to my video on that down in the description below. So I can move to any one of these Bibles. So if I wanna go to the Lexham English Bible, I can simply click that, and it's gonna open up the Lexham English Bible. Also, the Bibles as they appear in this order are available in a quick left to right arrow options. So if I hit the left arrow on my keyboard, it's going to move back to the ESV because that's the next uh, one in the parallel resource set. The next button available here is what's called the Visual Filters button, or this is the Visual Filters menu. This is probably the one that I get the most questions about as far as how do I access this or that, or why is this showing up on my text, or why can't I see this particular thing when I open my Bible? It's because we have an option turned on or off within our Visual Filters menu. So Visual Filters is basically controlling how the text appears to you within your resource. So if we click this little triple circle icon, we're going to get a little basic menu here. One of the sections that you're going to use more than any is this one called Resource. So if I expand that, you're going to see all kinds of different options available here. You're going to see things like addressee labels, or Bible text only, or community tags, or corresponding search results. I don't have time to go through each and every one of these individually, so if you have questions about any of these, make sure that you ask them in the comments down below, because I may make a video on that particular feature if you ask about it. So the one that most people are probably using or have available to them or get confused by is this one called Bible Text Only. If we go ahead and expand that section and turn this on, you're going to notice that this adjusts how our biblical text appears to us within our resource panel. So if we go ahead and open the visual filters menu again, we can turn on and off many of these different options. So for instance, if we don't want to see footnote indicators, i.e. these little hyperlinked letters within our Bible, perhaps we don't want to see those, we can go into our visual filters menu and unselect footnote indicators. And notice now all of the footnote indicators are gone from within the text. Right now, my Bible is set to one verse per line, but if I'd rather see it in paragraph form, I can unselect that box, and now I'm back into paragraph. I can also turn on or off chapter, verse, and numbers. So now I have a strictly plain text that's in paragraph format within the ESV that has neither verse numbers nor footnote indicators, or chapter headings, it's just the plain text in paragraph format. So if you want to really read a clean Bible without any other types of markings on it, this is what I would recommend for you. So if I don't want to see any of this, I can turn Bible text only off again, and this will return my Bible text back to how it comes default in the ESV. So that's just one quick example how you can leverage the visual filters uh, menu, but we've got all kinds of other things that we can look at. So we can turn on and off community notes. We can turn on and off our notes and highlights. So if you'd like to see a particular note file that you have in here, you can turn that on and off, or a particular highlighter that you want to turn on and off. 
You can also turn on and off visual filters. So I actually have a video on visual filters and you can see that also in the link below in the description. So if I wanna turn on this visual filter that shows me Greek verbal forms, I can select that box and notice what happens. It adds the highlights from that visual filter that indicates what each verbal form is representing. So the blue colored words are my indicatives. The purple colored words are my infinitives and the green colored words are my participles. So you can quickly get to what type of verbal form are we dealing with here. So that's how you can do that with a visual filter. And then you can turn that on and off from within the visual filters menu in the resource panel toolbar. The next button available here is called the inline interlinear button. So this is available only in Bibles that have a reverse interlinear. So if your Bible has this button, that means there's a reverse interlinear, which means the English text has the Greek or the Hebrew text hidden behind it. So if you don't have this inline interlinear button, that means that particular Bible does not have an, inline, uh, an interlinear or reverse interlinear. For instance, if I open up my parallel resource menu and go to the Net Bible, we're going to notice that those two icons or that icon has disappeared because the Net Bible does not have a reverse interlinear. If I go back to my ESV, now those buttons are available. So if I click on inline interlinear, I then have a menu where I can turn on the inline interlinear. And from here you can see you have the English text on top with the Greek or the Hebrew text underneath. And you can select all kinds of different information like the surface text or the manuscript or transliterated forms or the lemma, the root, the morphology, the Strong's numbers, the Launida numbers, whatever kinds of information you want in there, you can have displayed in your inline interlinear. So you can turn that off by unselecting inline and then it's back to your regular text. Related to this button, but slightly different, is this interlinear button. So this is the same kinds of information, only when you click this, it provides you with a little ribbon down at the bottom where you can then select different words and get information that's available in the reverse interlinear. So if you just click on any word, so for instance, if I click on tenants, it's going to highlight tenants down below and show me the Greek that exists behind this English translation. We can turn off this ribbon by clicking the interlinear button again, and then it's gone again. The next button to the right is our inline search button. If we click this, this provides a search panel right within our resource panel. So for instance, if I want to find all of the instances of a particular word in my Bible, uh, how about the word vineyard? I can do that via an English search through a basic or Bible search. So if I just do a Bible search and type the word vineyard and then hit enter, this is going to search for all of the instances of this particular word in my English Bible. And then it displays it within the Bible by verse. So you can scroll through and look at all of those search hits. You can also search in Greek or Hebrew by doing a morph search. So if I want to change this to morph, I can then do a G colon and then type out the transliteration for that particular word and then select it from the dropdown and that will import or input the lemma syntax and that will find all of the lemmas then of that Greek word or the lexemes or the lexical form and now I can see here are all the words with the same lemma within the Greek New Testament. So that's the inline search for you and you can get rid of that by simply clicking the inline search button again or you can click the X over here in the top right hand corner. And the last of these buttons and this is a button that's only available within the Logos Now subscribers and that's the multiple resources. So if I click this, it gives me a drop down where I can then select different resources that I'd like to also display in lockstep with this particular. So you're going to want to only have resources that are versified or have verse milestones within them. So right now I have pre-selected the NA28, the Lexham Hebrew Bible, and the Logos Septuagint or LXX. So if I turn on show multiple resources, it's going to automatically show the resources that pair up with where I am in the Bible right now. So notice I'm in Mark 12.1, so it shows me the Nessa Alon 28th edition. And these are automatically linked together. So if I click on any word in one, it will highlight the other words in the other. As well as if I run an inline search in one, for instance, if I do this time uh, a search on the word Anthropos, 
and then run that search, it will show me the inline search results on one side as well as automatically sort the other side by those same results. Now here's a really cool part of this. Since I also had the Lexham Hebrew Bible and the Logos LXX, which are both Old Testament books, if I switch to an Old Testament chapter like Genesis 15.2, notice what happens. My view automatically changes so that now the LHB and the Septuagint are now visible, and those are also automatically linked to my ESV. And the same idea, I can click on a word and it's going to highlight it in the Hebrew as well as in the Greek in the Septuagint, and I can run inline searches in the same way. These are also all lockstepped and linked to the same visual filters that are visible. So if I turn on a visual filter like resource Bible text only, and then turn on one verse per line, and then also turn on my chapter and verse numbers, now it will adjust all of those in the same way. So that is the multiple resources button. And once again, that's only available to Logos Now subscribers right now. So you can turn that off by deselecting show multiple resources, and that will take us right back to our ESV, just how we left it. So that's a quick introduction to the resource panel toolbar buttons. So if you have further questions about any of these buttons, please feel free to leave me a comment down in the comment section below. If you like this type of tutorial, give me a thumbs up. And if you want to see further videos like this, make sure that, that you give me a subscribe by clicking here or down below. Also, if you enjoy my videos and you want to continue to contribute or interact with me in a deeper way, make sure that you visit my Patreon site. This will give you an opportunity to support my channel financially as well to help me to get to other goals and things that I want to do. And you can see all those goals on my Patreon page by clicking the link here or in the description down below. As always, enjoy mining the depths of the scriptures using Logos. Until next time.